Hi, this is Misha. And I kind of have a thing for Argentinian guns. And we have several videos on their FALs. The FMK3 submachine gun and the high power. And both of these guns here have appeared in other compilation videos about different things. But I wanted to just talk about them as related to Argentina. Here we have an Argentinian Navy FN 49, or sometimes referred to as the SAFN. This is chambered for 7.62 NATO and takes detachable 20 round magazines. And was a conversion done in Argentina. Also on the table, we have a Beretta BM59E. This was a conversion of Argentine, well, Argentinian Navy again, uh, M1 Grands to fire again 7.62 NATO from a 20 round detachable magazine. So, very similar concept of taking an older self loading rifle from the 40s and updating it to fire a NATO cartridge and from detachable mags. Unfortunately, neither of these take, they, these both take their own mags and neither take FAL mags. So, the Argentinian Navy actually had three different types of 20 round FAL mags. Let's talk about the FN 49 first. This gun has an interesting history, and that's really for the, the FN 49 history itself is for a different video. But as it pertains to Argentina, basically the FN 49 was a project that the company did, FN Herstel, to raise money to pay for the FAL during its latter stages of development. It uses a lot of the same principles as the FAL. And really most consider it the father or the grandfather. Originally it would have fired from a 20, excuse me, a 10 round fixed magazine. And FN would make it in several cartridges. 30-06, 7.62 by 63 was, I guess, perhaps the standard, because that's what Belgium went with. But the Argentine Navy purchased it in 7.65 millimeter. And they would buy about 5,500 and some change, 55, 30, 55, 40, doesn't matter, 5,500 in this caliber. These would be like every other FN 49 at the time. In the old Argentine caliber and feeding from the fixed mag. Well, after purchasing these a short time later, Argentina would adopt the FAL, 1955, and it would go into production. And they were looking at their old guns. Well, not so old, really. But they were already old in the sense that they were getting obsolescent, firing a cartridge that more and more of the Argentine military was no longer using. So instead of just scrapping them, or just keeping them in the system but firing an obsolete round, they had them reworked to fire the then new 7.62 by 51 cartridge, 7.62 NATO, which was the same round as the FAL. Now, when they did that, they went to a detachable magazine. Right here. Boop. 20 rounds. Does have a bolt hold open, but it is not the same as an FAL. I can only assume they looked into using FAL mags, but because of how the receiver was designed and, the, and everything else, they just it wasn't practical. So this had its own mag, proprietary to the Argentinian Navy FN49. Now they would not purchase any new FN49s, of course, but they would convert most of the 5500 over to this new pattern in the early to mid 1960s and these would serve on board ships and with marine type units and landing party type units well into the 70s and were even used at least they were in service and in inventory during the Falklands War. After that most were sold off as surplus and came into the USA. 
Now, interestingly, during the assault weapons ban, before these were grandfathered in as CNR, this was considered an assault weapon during the 94 period because it has a detachable magazine and a threaded barrel and a bayonet lug. <laughs> kind of funny. Now these would have quite beefy stocks and we'll have a paint over park finish just like the FAL. The receivers are the original Belgian. The barrels are Argentinian made from the new caliber. And the magazines are Argentinian. Even though these are proprietary, they're actually very easy to find even today. And these, are, these are mags were very cheap when these guns were coming in and soon after. When I picked this gun up a few years ago, it came with a good number of mags. Because this is the only gun these work in. Unless you have one of these guns, and there aren't that many in the U.S., a mag doesn't do you any good. So even though they sent over thousands upon thousands of mags, there only seem to be a, a, a couple of thousand or maybe even just a few hundred of these in the USA. But it's just interesting how they made this. And it's funny because if the FN-49 was originally a grandfather to the FAL, this version here firing the same cartridge and from detachable mags is basically a stepdad or stepbrother. And this is getting extremely close to the FAL. We have the same tilting bolt in here. We have a recoil system almost identical to the FAL paratrooper. And the gas system, the gas plug looks almost identical. And the gas piston isn't too far off it either. So you can definitely see a lot of proto FAL features in this gun. I just think it's neat. I don't own many FN49s, but this is one I always wanted and uh, picked up many moons ago. Well, in a similar vein, after World War II, Argentina found itself with a good number of American M1 Agarands in 30 out 6, 7.62 by 63. These were fine for the 40s and 50s, but as everyone was moving more and more towards the NATO cartridge, they needed to figure out what to do with Agarands. Well, an easy solution was hit upon. Beretta had just introduced the BM-59. And while it would do some purpose-built guns, which are the, probably the BM-59s you're most familiar with, they would also do the BM-59SL and the BM-59E models, which were factory-converted Garands. So basically what countries would do, if they had older Garands that still had good receivers, they would contract with Beretta to convert them over to the BM-59E. And what this got you was... A muzzle brake, a reworked 7.62 NATO barrel, a rubber recoil pad, and feeding from detachable Italian box magazines. Same mag that the Italian military used in their BM-59s for decades. Also, select fire was optional. Some were created with it, some were just converted without it. It was up to the customer. They, Breda would do it both ways. The Italian Navy would opt for select fire. This is why this particular gun was actually built by James River. However, I really liked how they built it because they used an original Argentinian M1 Grand converted by Beretta to a BM-59E kit complete with barrel and they built it on a modified M1 Grand receiver so even though it was assembled here in the US it has all the same components except for the full auto stuff that it would have as a military rifle. Now what's interesting about this barrel they did not actually make new barrels for these they would take the existing 30-06 barrel and cut it down by about half an inch, producing about a 22-inch barrel. Very nice economy there. I guess it's good if you have a good barrel, good bore. It also means, though, that the gas system is a little different from a Grand because it's all a little bit shorter. The op rod and all that has to be just a little, about a half inch shorter to work.
We do have a bolt hold open as you see, and we even have a bolt release. So the Argentinian Navy would get Beretta to convert, uh, I don't really know the number, I'm sorry guys, several thousand though of these, and they would be in service alongside the FN-49s. And mostly these would be kept on board ships for guards, but it was an option. And again, these were still technically in service during the Falklands War. Afterwards, since they were technically select fire, they could not be imported as CNR guns into the U.S., so they had to be... Um, have the receivers demilled and brought over as parts kits, but thankfully they came over before the 2005 barrel ban, as it were, so at least the kits did come in with intact original barrels. So all you needed to do was get an M1 Grand receiver, modify it for the detachable mag accordingly, and you were in business. This is a, like I said, I'm, I'm quite happy with how James River did this build because it's extremely authentic. Well, that's about it. I just thought we would share kind of the the less lesser known Argentinian guns in, in the service alongside the FNFAL and the FMFAL. Well, if you'd like to share your own stories or have any questions, please post them below. And if you like the video, please click like. And if you'd like to help support us, please check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha. And we'll catch you next time.